Hello and uh, thanks for joining me again in this latest video. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different to the usual sort of how to use a Poisson pack and how to predict draws. Uh, only a little bit different, it's still basically the same. Um, but now this time, um, going uh, from a comment on one of the videos I had recently on YouTube, and I did just look back through the comments and I couldn't find it. Um, and I don't think I responded to it, so apologies for that. But somebody mentioned, one of the members I think it was, uh, mentioned the possibility of looking at using expected goals stats instead of average goals stats in the Poisson distribution model. I think that's what the comment was uh, referring to. If it wasn't, and I've gone off on a tangent, I apologise. But um, So what I took from the comment was, would expected goals make for a more accurate look um, at the predictions in the Poisson distribution pack rather than using average goals stats? Uh, so I started to wonder about that and thought it's quite an interesting concept. Uh, expected goals are more and more common now. You'll see them used in almost every live TV uh, football broadcast. And I, I, they're fascinating. I haven't really done much work on expected goals, but um, they are quite uh, an interesting interesting concept. And it, I mean, it's not a concept, is it? It's fact. It's stats. Um, very, very deep, uh, deeply derived stats um, including as you can see from the sort of screen um, shot positions quality of chances uh, likelihood of people to score uh, from certain areas and I think it, it's interesting because it, it quantifies the quality of shots and quality of chances that a team is having throughout the throughout the match uh, which in theory really you should think that expected goals would be more accurate than average goals scored um, or certainly give a different level of accuracy. Uh, so I thought we'll have a look at it. Um, why not? Why not try and see what happens? So for the expected goals, for those of you who aren't massively familiar with it, um, it's probably best if you have a little read of it rather than me rambling because I'm not going to be the most um, succinct, succinct, whatever, uh, the best person to listen to. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired, man. Uh, succinct. What is that word? So. This is a good, really good website I found, The Analyst, which I've read up uh, a few times, actually. Um, it's an article from 2021, and it just gives a little explanation about ex expected goals and what they are and how you can sort of um, apply them to sort of every match that we, we look at um, and sort of come at a common sense, sort of layman's approach to it. I thought this was quite a, an interesting infographic, actually, uh, that helps explain it. So it's to do with comparing uh, Gabriel Jesus to... Uh, Hakan Kalaglu, um, and it shows that even though Gabriel Jesus is sort of underperforming compared to his expected goals, so this is saying that for his chances, you'd expect, uh, well, you can see here, it says underneath, uh, you'd expect the average player to score nearly 18 goals from his chances, and he's actually scored 14 goals. Um, and on the other hand, from Hakan, you'd say you'd expect 7% of uh, only seven goals to be scored from his chances and he scored eight so he's actually overperformed compared to his expected goals but it just shows what the chances are that, and that's why their their um, scoring rates are going to be massively different aren't they I know they're playing different positions regardless of the fact that they're different players that's the whole point you can see the difference is easier in a striker and a midfielder or attacking midfielder so Gabriel Jesus is getting much better chances basically is what this is saying he's got a much better chance of scoring than Hakan and that is why his goals figures are going to be higher. I mean, it's not rocket science, is it? And if we look down here, you can see where he's having his shots from uh, in the Premier League in 1920. And you can see which ones are the goals, the big red blobs, the purple ones are the shots. And the better the chance, the bigger the blob. Um, and you can see that that's why there's a higher expected goals figure for that shot map than there is for Hackens, which you can see down here. There's a few goals dotted about, but the big purple blobs are much fewer and far between than with Gabriel Jesus's, and the shots, so the the chances, if you like, are much further out. So you can see from the two sort of heat maps how expected goals works, if you like. So you can see that the expected goals is going to be a higher figure for these sort of chances than it is for these sort of chances. That's a kind of easy way to just look at it without going any more deeply into it. Uh, so... With that in mind, I thought I'd implement that into the uh, like Poisson formula. So just literally swap the average goals stats for expected goals stats. And to do that, I used the Understat website, which is the best 
website, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best website for expected goals. And so I went to the home and away sections and looked at the expected goal stats. So you can see here, these are the standard stats that are currently table. So if you look at Man City, goals for 34, expected goals 29.31. So it says it there, overperforming from their um, expected goals. So I guess that could mean, what could it mean? You can analyse that however you want. You could say that they score more worldies, if you like. Uh, they're scoring from positions that the, the average player wouldn't necessarily score from. Um, so they're outperforming their expected goals. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? And they've had Liverpool slightly under at 1.76 less, so they have scored 27. They'd be expected to score 28.76. Could that just mean that they create an absolute ton of chances in and around the box, um, which they do with their intricate play? I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of speculating here. You, I'm not perhaps the person to tell you exactly why the figures are what they are, but I'm they are <laughs> that is what the figures are uh, you can also do it with points so you get expected points versus uh, actual points which is quite an interesting concept actually um, so that's how it is that's home and that's away same difference for both so uh, how did I do this so Master Pross and that should be the name of my, my channel shouldn't it rather than the Math Batman. I love that I've, I've only done that to distinguish from all of the members sheets but Master Pross it sounds like some sort of Kung Fu expert but not a really rubbish one who can only do maths um so, so what did I do? I just, as I said, I just swapped out these figures here, goal for and against, um, for expected goals for and expected goals against, and then my averages tallied up the same as they did before, and it gave me um, a Poisson expected goals and against, if you like, so an attack strength and a defence strength, which is common to the, the model that we've been using, and then put it into the same get rid of that the same uh, thing that we put it into so this is the, the standard process and this is for the premiership games coming up uh, and so what in this one sorry this is the table meant to put to go to we've gone to a little bit different so I've added in now we've got the expected goals odds and we've got the standard process on odds so these process on odds are the ones that come from here I've, I've dragged them in uh, directly from this spreadsheet so they're exactly the same so any members or anybody just watching the video um, you can see that the the Poisson odds these are for the games coming up at the weekend um, for the Premier League uh, they're the, the calculated odds for Poisson they're the, the value uh, the real odds from Betfair so I've pulled these into this spreadsheet and that's P2V Poisson 2.0 value odds expected goals value odds the difference between the two and the real odds from Betfair and then I've split it out here as well so you've got the the score lines the first one is for expected goals and the second no sorry the first one is for um, Poisson and the second one is for expected I should have changed that out a bit shouldn't I you'll see why I didn't in a minute so how does it compare um, basically they're pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> Sorry to sort of, uh, I wasn't clickbaiting and wanting you to sort of get to the end and that. But I'll, I'll show you what, what we've got. So, well, as you can see, there's not much difference. West Ham versus Newcastle. Um, the Poisson odds are saying that there's a slightly, um, there's slightly longer odds for West Ham to beat Newcastle. It, expected goals are saying 1.44 plus I'm saying 1.75 so I mean there's a decent difference I guess a difference of 0 0.31 and I've highlighted that in green because that's saying that the expected goals model is giving the team a more positive chance of winning um, so the Poisson is sort of underestimating the outcome if you like uh, so I mean if you're looking at the Poisson you wouldn't be getting you'd be getting exactly on value um, if you're looking at expected goals the real odds would be presenting proper value uh, so it, it is giving them a, a better chance. Um, it's not. It's probably the biggest one we've got actually. I think so. So if you like, you could say that expected goals for this match. If you use expected goals instead of average goal odds, it's giving West Ham a much better chance of winning. Um, you can look at the draw odds. I mean, the draw odds are, are much different actually. So the the price on are predicting four. Um, but ex expected goals are saying six point three four. So it's saying that there's no well, much less chance of there being a draw. Um, and the same with uh, Newcastle, it's saying, Poisson saying 5.4, expected goals um, is saying 9.74 odds. So it's really saying going on West Ham for expected goals. Um, 
Uh, so that makes the 1.75 look a lot more favourable. So that's that's a fairly interesting start. It doesn't do much to the score lines at all. For every single game, the score line, the predicted score lines are the same. The only thing that changes is the percentage chance of that score line, which is kind of irrelevant for us because you're still selecting the same score line, and the Dutch stakes would still be the same. And you can see it's minimal. You know, there's really not much of a change. And if we scroll through, it's a similar story, really. Arsenal, Brentford, very little change. So if any, it's saying that there's slightly um, that Poisson is sort of underestimating. Well, um, overestimating, sorry, the chance of Brentford getting anything out of the game. So ex- expected goals is saying there's even less chance of Brentford getting anything. Villa Watford, negligible. Brighton Burnley, negligible. Slightly um, more chance, according to ex- expected goals than Poisson. But, I mean, again, it's very small. Um, but it's it's favouring Brighton. The Palace-Chelsea game is saying that um, Palace have got a better chance than Poisson suggests of getting something out of the game. So um, the expected goals for Crystal Palace and the draw are higher. Um, there's a higher chance than the Poisson is suggesting. So I mean, it's still it's still coming out as Chelsea being likely winners, but it's giving more encouragement to Palace fans, I guess. Liverpool Norwich is just uh, it's a car crash for Norwich, isn't it? Really. Um, it, it's even worse. So expected goals give them even less chance of getting anything. Um, the Poisson says that fair odds would be 123.31 and expected goals says, no, nah, that's not enough, 124.92. I mean, it's kind of pointless for any sort of betting, I think. Um, Southampton, Everton, again, very little change. Same with Man City, Tottenham. I mean, uh, expected goals is is saying that it's even less chance of Tottenham getting anything out of this one than Poisson suggests. Scoreline's the same. Leeds, <laughs> very slight um, difference in the in the draw odds, but nothing worth writing home about. Wolves, Leicester, um, even less chance of Leicester getting anything. So it's saying that Wolves should be even even shorter odds than they are to beat Leicester so I mean it can inform your betting a little bit but I'm not sure there's m- much in it I'm not sure there's enough in it for me to um, want to build it into the model um, it's interesting isn't it it's an, it's an interesting concept maybe using it in a different way to putting it into a Poisson model might change things and also this is for these uh, these specific fixtures it might be that I oh, know I haven't looked at it, but it might be that Villa have got a massively different expected goals for away matches, where they're at home in this match, so that's not going to be highlighted here. So next week when we come back and Villa are away, it might change their odds massively. And when you match the two teams up, because Poisson sort of um, uses the, the stats from the two teams to play off against each other, um, it's going to vary you know, game to game more. It's not just a case of looking down the table and saying the expected goals are this, this and this. You've then got a divide them by the averages for home and away goals and you've got to use a proportion of each team each team's stats to run through the Poisson model. Yeah, it's all long. But what I'm saying is it doesn't necessarily mean that expected goals aren't going to have an impact on results. I don't mean that. But when you put it into the Poisson model, whether you use average goals or or uh, expected goals, it's kind of negligible. It's quite interesting to see that there are some slight differences um, and it, it might inform you going forward but is it worth adding in and sort of going the extra mile I'd suggest not but that's up to you anyway thanks for watching I hope it was slightly interesting um, once I'd figured it all out I was hoping there'd be some massive differences and there weren't but because I'd spent so much time doing it I thought I'm making a video anyway so if you've got this far thanks see you later